Hello everyone, greetings from Ireland, from the University of Galway here in the west of Ireland. My name is Claire Karen, and I am joined with my um, two colleagues here, Mary Pat O'Malley and Mary Larkin, and we're delighted to be part of this um, conference. Um, our study is called From I Like Talking to My Mammy to I Don't Talk at School understanding the lives of children with speech sound disorders using mixed methods. We're here, this research is all part of our undergraduate research um, program here, and we're delighted to be sharing um, the, the findings with you from, and we need to acknowledge all the students that have been a part of this. So you have our details there, so do contact, contact us. So these are photos of us here and um, I'm top left, then we have Rena, then we've Mary Pat and Mary Larkin all involved in this. And that's a picture of our beautiful university here in Galway. I'm going to hand you over now to Mary Pat to share the next piece of the, of the presentation. Thanks, Claire. Hi, everyone. Now I'm going to talk you through um, our research questions and methods for the study. So what we wanted to know was we had four things. We had four research questions. So we wanted to know, could drawings be used to gain insights into the perspectives of children with speech sound disorders on their communication? We've had undergraduate students also investigate the perspectives of children who stutter and the perspectives of multilingual children on what it means to grow up being multilingual in Ireland. But for this particular study, we are focusing on children who had identified speech sound disorders. We also wanted to know then in the drawings, what focal points were evident, were evident excuse me, in their drawings. We wanted to find out how the children felt about having a speech sound disorder. And we wanted to know about the verbal descriptions of their drawings and what insights that would give us into the children's worlds. In terms of who took part in this study that we're reporting on, we had 30 children with speech sound disorders. The mean age of the children was five years and seven months with a range of 50 to 88 months. We had 17 boys, 13 girls, and for all of our participants, English was their first language. In terms of what we asked the children to do then, um, there were a series of tasks that we asked the children to do. So the first one was we asked them to draw four pictures and then talk about their pictures. The four pictures were something they liked doing, talking to their family, talking at home, and talking at school. For each child then, the deep or diagnostic evaluation of articulation and phonology diagnostic screen was completed. And also for each child, the SPA-C or speech participation and activity assessment of children by McLeod in 2004 was conducted. We also asked the parents to do something. So we asked the parents to complete the intelligibility in context scale for each child. Then we had a lot of data, so we needed to do some serious analysis as well. So we had, this is a mixed methods study, so we had quantitative measures and qualitative measures. For the quantitative measures, looking at the drawings, we conducted three different kinds of analysis. One was the developmental analysis from Delay Moss and Doig 1999, the Who Am I Draw a Person scale, so looking at the developmental nature of the children's drawings. Then a uh, psychological analysis and Holiday's 2008 adaptation of Fury's relationship analysis or the AFRA was conducted. And we also did a focal point analysis of the children's drawings inspired by Holiday 2008, Holiday et al 2009, and the most recent McCormick et al paper from 2022. In terms of qualitative measures then, we conducted a meaning-making thematic analysis of the children's talk about their drawings um, inspired by Braun and Clark. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Mary, who's going to tell you all about what we found when we conducted these analyses. Thanks to Mary Pat. So we're going to look at the findings now from this study. So the first mode of assessment that we're looking at is the diagnostic evaluation of articulation and phonology, the diagnostic screen. So from this single word sample for each of the participants, we found a percentage of consonant correct. So the mean score was 70.71%, which suggests a mild to moderate speech sound disorder. 
Next was the speech participation and activity assessment of children, so the SPA-C. This was a self-report measure and we used just the faces task from this assessment. So the children were asked how they felt about their talking and they picked a face that represented how they felt. So the mean score of 1.71 suggests that the children felt between in the middle or happy about their talking. Next was the intelligibility in context scale. So this was a parental report and the mean score of 3.59 suggested that the parents felt that their children were usually to sometimes understood. So they usually are sometimes understood their children talking to them. So next, looking at the focal points that we found in the drawings. So each drawing was assigned either one or two focal points, with two being the maximum focal point points that could be found in each drawing. So the first focal point, we have six of them, was facial expressions. So a lot of the drawings, um, over 50%, uh, ha facial expressions featured quite heavily. So there was smiling faces, neutral expressions, and sometimes surprised faces in the drawings. The next one was accentuation of body features. So some of the features that were accentuated in the drawings were eyes, ears, and mouths, and this was evident in six of the drawings. Next is portrayal of talking and listening. So talking and listening was portrayed using speech bubbles, open mouth, sound waves, music notes, and written words. So lots of different ways. And this was in 33 of the drawings. Next up is colors used. So lots of the um, drawings use bright colors. Some use single colors for the whole drawing and some used quite dull colors. Next is the conversational partners that featured in the drawings. Lots of the drawings had family members, friends, teachers, some had imaginary friends and animals in the drawings. So this was evident in 44 of the drawings. Next up is sense of self. So in some of the drawings, the child was small, drawn smaller than other figures, which may represent a negative sense of self. Also, friends were scribbled out in one drawing, which may suggest that this child has a negative sense of self. And this was evident in 17 of the drawings. So here are some examples of the focal points. So the first one is facial expressions. So as you can see, participant 18 um, used smiling faces to draw her and her friend at school in the classroom playing. Participant 18 confirmed her positive attitude towards this interaction. She told the researcher that they were talking about how do you like school and that they were feeling good in this drawing. Next up, participant 9 used neutral facial expressions to draw him and his friend. As you can see, um, the this drawing is used, drawn using one colour only mm -hmm. and with neutral facial expressions. However, participant nine said he was feeling happy in this drawing when asked by the researcher. Next up is the portrayal of talking and listening. Participant 16 used a speech bubble to draw her telling her mum, I love you. Um, the figures are facing towards each other and with their arms outstretched. When asked if she likes talking to her mother, participant 16 responded, yeah, I love her, look. Next up, participant three used a speech bubble to portray talking, and she told the researcher that they were talking about going to the beach. Um, this drawing portrays a sense of happiness and joy with bright colors used and smiling facial expressions also. So next up, looking at the colors used in this study. So as previously mentioned, a wide variety of colors were used despite all participants being given the same 10 coloring pencils to use. Notably, 80.8% of drawings by girls used three colors or more, while only 38.2% of drawings by boys used three colors or more. This may suggest that there was a link between the gender of the participant and the colors that they used. So as you can see here, participant five used lots of bright colors in her um, drawing of herself talking at home. So the house is drawn really colorfully with a heart at the center of the home, which may suggest her positive feelings towards talking in this environment. Also looking at her body language that she's facing towards the house uh, with arms outstretched and a, and a smiling face as well, indicating how she feels about talking at home. And then below that, you can see participant six talking at home as well in his drawing. 
However, in this drawing, only one color was used, um, a black pencil. Also, the participant, the participant drew himself facing away from the house, which may suggest negative feelings towards talking, along with the dull colors used. So I'm going to hand you back to Claire now. Okay, thank you, Mary. So this was the thematic analysis piece and what we found from the talking that the children did about their drawings. And we found three different themes. The first theme is about perceptions of talking. And this, the sub themes as part of this were about positive attitudes towards talking. Another sub theme was talking as an activity. And this was where that talking just happened. So the activity of talking just happened in soccer or while reading. Whereas there was another sub theme called talking as an action. And this would be where the, the actual talking was identified through speech bubbles, but they're actually doing doing the talking um, in, in the, as the, the children in the, in the, in the, with the picture. The drawing, second theme then was about drawings and how they reflect a child's world. So a lot of information, um, I suppose, we found related to the drawings and to the talking about the drawings was about the children's interests to so finding out more and things that were interested in were soccer, reading um, and singing. Relationships was another key sub theme that linked to, I suppose, the different people, those and Mary alluded to all the communication partners that were, were involved. So there were friends, particularly friends and parents and um, yeah, family members, but also animals. Um, and also, interestingly, another sub theme was that it showed the drawings reflected the children's imagination. And for one child, um, one of the figures in a, a picture was their imaginary friend. Another theme was about participation in the drawing task. And for this, the actual taking part gave a sense of pride to children. They enjoyed it. And the children acted as storytellers and telling stories about the pictures that they had drawn. So what did we learn from the study? Well, we set out with, I suppose, the big question, the research question about could children, um, could we use drawing um, with children with SSD? And we found, yes, it is an appropriate method to understand more, to gain their views. Um, and particularly within the age range of the children that have been involved in this study were between four and seven years old. Um, we found out a lot about their interests. Um, when asked to draw something they enjoy, 70% of the drawings um, did not require communicative interactions with others. And this is similar to findings from McLeod et al. in 2013. And then about the portrayal of talking, I suppose the interesting piece about talking as an action versus talking as an activity. And interestingly, the recent paper by Jane McCormick et al. Um, highlighted similar findings. Um, and generally, there was a very positive portrayal of talking, and again, similar to Jane McCormack et al's work in 2019. So about relationships, I suppose what shows is that these children had a variety of conversation partners, um, and I suppose their commentary, their talking about the drawings, revealed them more about their relationships. So interestingly, one of the children, participant 13, described her friend as her bestie, so giving us more information about the friend. Another participant, um, participant 17, said, I'm talking to my brother and he's he's my friend. So again, giving more information about the, the brother. So thank you very much for listening to us. And I suppose what is important to let you know is, is that we're very active here in the University of Galway in continuing our research um, using drawing as a tool. So we're using it with many of our undergraduate students are conducting research this year um, and looking at children, further children who, with children who stutter and also children who are multilingual, just to find out more about their views of talking. And we have a PhD student at the moment also looking at using drawing and looking at children who stutter. So thank you very much for listening to us and I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Thank you. <laughs>